Hey everybody. So I wanted to film a video on aquaporins given that I don't see anybody else creating content on that. And given that we've had this personal experience with my husband curing his low back pain that was debilitating and chronic just by removing spinach and going down that rabbit hole and discovering aquaporins. So we're going to go over a brief overview why spinach might not be that health food that it's been built up to be. So let me share my screen with you so that you can see what I'm talking about. All righty. So um, most people, when they think of spinach, they think of oxalates, right? Oxalates are terrible. And I agree, They, if you have kidney stones, the last thing you want to be consuming are oxalates, whether from spinach or from almonds. However, it's not just the oxalates that's very problematic in spinach. It's also the aqua aquaporins, which is a pretty scary self-defense um, mechanism enlisted by plants. Not only spinach has um, aquaporins, but also tomatoes and soy and corn. And so the reason that we don't eat them anymore is because my husband, as you know, um, has had a very um, chronic low back pain and he has a bulging disc. So we always thought it was just a bulging disc and it got to a point where he had to get laser surgery. Um, and, you know, there were side effects and, you know, he really didn't want to do it. But by the time it was just to the point where there is no other option, he has to do it. That's when I was discovering carnivore, right? And so we discovered that just by taking out the only plant food that he ate, which was spinach, his low back pain completely went away, which was amazing. So um, he still has the bulging disc. So even though you might have a mechanical damage to your spine, um, it does not mean that you have to suffer the symptoms or have any pain. It's, it's almost as if he doesn't have anything there. So, um, why do aquaporins mess us up? That's because aquaporins look very similar as a protein to the human aquaporin. So in our bodies, we have a human aquaporin form, which looks very similar to the food aquaporin, which is found in spinach, corn, soy, and tomatoes. And it's especially found in humans, in our brain's astrocytic cells. Astrocytic cells are not nerve cells. So they are cells that support your brain cells or your nerve cells. They engulf them with myelin sheath and they help support the blood brain barrier integrity. So they are also found in um, our lungs, brain, and stomach. And so all of those areas are potential targets for when you eat spinach for that damage to happen. So our human aquaporin is actually a water channel. All aquaporins, even the plant aquaporin, is a water channel that regulates water flow in and out. Um, in our brain specifically, the aquaporins help to remove waste from the brain and it allows neuroplasticity, the changing of our brain cells that occur in response to what we, you know, the habits that we create. It allows that to happen and it regulates water flow into and out of our brain. Astrocytes are uh, also really interesting because they support that integrity of the brain, the blood brain barrier. Um, so they allow you to have a good seal that would not allow things that have no business crossing into your brain from being able to cross into your brain. And let me show you this little image that you can see here. This is, uh, this is how astrocytes help support blood brain barrier integrity. This is an astrocyte right here, and you can see how it engulfs the blood vessel. So this is the blood vessel. This The lumen is like the inside of the blood vessel. And then you can see the endothelial cells are a single line cell layer um, surrounding the interior of all of your blood vessels. And so the astrocyte actually helps support the tight junction. So it prevents um, leakage, if you want, and that's how it you prevent leaky brain. So eating spinach can, if you have leaky gut, which by the way, everybody, almost everybody, if you live in this day and age, everybody has some degree of leaky gut, and I have created a video on that, so make sure you watch it. I will link it, and I will link it also in the description below. So when you have leaky gut and you eat spinach, spinach now 
have that aquaporin and the spinach can cross into your blood because you have leaky gut. So that leaky gut is not doing a good job of preventing the aquaporins from crossing into your blood. So once you have aquaporins in your blood, your body will create antibodies against it because it's not used to seeing that in the blood. It's not supposed to be there. So it freaks out. It thinks it's an invader. And so it creates antibodies against it. And so now you have antibodies, but those antibodies that work to try and destroy the um, aquaporins, they can also destroy your own aquaporins because they look very similar. And I'm going to try and show you here why they look so similar. So you can see here, soybean or spinach aquaporins and human aquaporins. Th this is just showing you the sequence uh, of just how similar those proteins are. And so your body mistakes your own body's um, aquaporins for the invader aquaporins from the spinach. And so it starts to destroy them. And um, then what happens, you start if you're if you're trying to destroy your own aquaporins, what, what do you think is going to happen to your astrocytes, which are very heavily, um, they express a ton of aquaporins on them. If you're now messing with the aquaporins on the astrocytes, now the astrocytes can do their job of having, uh, of preserving that um, blood brain barrier integrity. So now you have a leaky brain, right? So destroying the function of your brain's astrocytes would lead to a leaky brain, which would allow the molecules that shouldn't cross into the brain to be able to do so, which now would trigger your immune system to attack them by creating even more antibodies. So you have a leaky brain. So now even more things and environmental triggers now are crossing into the brain. And so now the immune system is not supposed to see those foreign items in your brain. And so now it launches additional attacks, additional antibodies. And those antibodies that are created also start to mistake your own tissues for those environmental things that they're trying to destroy. And so now you're also destroying your own brain's tissues in addition to the aquaporins that you're already trying to destroy, which you know you really can't destroy them very well. Um, so eventually what happens is that you have all these autoimmune attacks, your body's destroying your own tissues from your own aquaporins that jeopardize the function of your, um, astrocytes to destroying other, um, tissues in your brain. So all of those different items in your brain and different chemical structures in your brain are under attack. And the more of those that happen, the more destruction that happens, the more you start to develop autoimmune diseases like, you know, autism, multiple sclerosis, and Alzheimer's disease. And let me show you the image that shows this, how it happens. You have an, you, you got to have a gene that makes you susceptible. So you got to have a gene for Alzheimer's or a multitude of genes for Alzheimer's or multiple sclerosis or autism, whatever the case may be, that makes you vulnerable. Once you have that gene and you're eating things like spinach or corn or soy, although spinach seems to be the most reactive, um, or tomatoes, or any, anything that has aquaporins, you're eating them, your body is reacting to them, creating antibodies to the spinach aquaporins, but you're also destroying your own aquaporins. And because you're destroying your own aquaporins, you're destroying... Um, your uh, your astrocytes, and so you're jeopardizing the blood-brain barrier integrity, which leads to even more attacks, and so eventually that leads to neurological autoimmunity, meaning your own body is attacking your own nervous tissue. And you might say, well, let's just cook them, right? Or, you know, let's just try to pressure cook the spinach. Well, dietary aquaporins are resilient to cooking methods. No matter what you do to them, they're going to be intact. You're going to absorb them as such, and you're going to react to them. So I'm going to link this study that is just so fantastic that lays out the whole thing in the description box below. You can check it out and see if there's anything there that um, you would like to see even more. I'm going to stop the sharing here. So yeah, that's a little summary of aquaporins, and that is why we don't eat spinach, and that is why all we do is eat meat, lift, and repeat. If you haven't gotten that mug, what are you doing? Get it. It's in the description box. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell icon so YouTube alerts you every time I post a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.